Last time, we created services so that we could load and save our reservations for our hotel to a database. But by doing that, we actually introduced a little bit of an issue. So every time we go to our reservation listing page, we load the reservations from the database. And this happens every single time we hit that page, even though we've already loaded the reservations previously. So for example, we start the application, we're on the reservation listing page and we're loading the reservations. So hitting the database there. And then I go to the make reservation page and then click cancel. And here we go, loading the reservations again, even though we already loaded them. But we might actually need to load the reservations when we go to this page, because if I go to make a reservation and actually make one, so we submit that. And now we have a new reservation in our database. And now we go back to the reservation listing page. So obviously, we would need to requery these from the database so that we're not viewing the old data, which would be stale and not include this new reservation. So the ultimate solution to this issue is to create a store. And this store is going to store and manage our application state. So it's going to load our data and cache it locally so that we don't have to hit the database every single time. And then whenever we create a reservation, we're going to do that by using the store so that we can update our application state. So this store is going to be our single source of truth for hotel reservations, and we're gonna go through the story for everything related to hotel reservation database interaction. So we've already kind of gone in the stores, we have this navigation store, and the stores, the application state for our current view model. So this is the view model for the current page that we wanna display, but we're gonna have a new store here, and we're gonna call this the hotel store. So the first thing we have to consider with our store is what kind of state this is going to manage and expose. So in this case, we are gonna manage the state for our reservations, and expose that as just an I enumerable. So an I enumerable of reservations, import that, and we'll just call this reservations. And this will just be a read only getter, but we'll have a private list of reservations so that we can add and remove reservations through that list. And exposing this as an I enumerable is actually important because we don't want any kind of external class to just use our hotel store and add and remove items from our reservations. We want all of that state management to be done internally within the hotel store, which we can do through this private list of reservations. So in the constructor, we will initialize that list. So on our hotel store, we want to be able to load our reservations and also create a reservation. So first off, we're just going to have a load method. It's going to have to be an async task so that we can hit our database without blocking the UI. And we can just call this load. And inside here, we're going to load our reservations. So currently we do that in the load reservations command. And that is done by taking our hotel and getting all the reservations. So that being said, in our hotel store, we're going to need a reference to our hotel that we want to load. So let's put that into a field and let's actually just grab that load logic from our load reservations command. So we can actually just cut that out and plop it in here. And now we can just take our reservations list and add all of those reservations that we just loaded. And before we do that, we should clear the list just in case there's some stale data in there. So now in the load reservations command, we can actually get rid of our hotel in here and instead use the hotel store. So import that, update our field as well, and we can use the hotel store and load it, and then just pass the hotel store's reservations to our view model. So same kind of thing as before, but we did change this constructor, so let's update that. We're gonna take our hotel store through the reservation listing view model now. Same thing in this helper method that does the loading for us. Change that to the hotel store, and this bubbles up to our app.xaml.cs, where we are gonna initialize our single hotel store. So we'll do that in the constructor, and just pass in our hotel. So we are initializing this once so that our hotel state is centralized and managed in a single location. And then lastly, we just have to pass in that hotel store to our reservation listing view model. And let's make sure this works. So there we go, once startup, we load our reservations, hit the database, and there we go, we got them. But if I go back to the reservation listing page again, we load them again. So we really haven't accomplished anything here. So we need to get into implementing the logic so that we only initialize all of this once. And we could do some funky stuff with like a Boolean flag for is loaded. And then if is loaded is false, then we start doing all of this and then set is loaded to true. But that is not the most thread safe approach. So instead, what we are gonna use is the mighty system.lazy. So we are gonna have a lazy, and this will be a lazy, for the task that is going to do our loading. So I'll call this the initialize lazy and let's instantiate that in the constructor. So just a new lazy for a task. And what this lazy is going to do is make sure that our initialization only happens once. But what we have to do is pass in a factory function that is going to create the task 
that we want to initialize once. So that task is going to be represented by all of this logic. So let's move this into a method. We'll call this just initialize. So this logic is what we want to execute when we execute our lazy. So let's pass that in and get that task that's going to do that initialization. And actually, I think we can just remove this lambda and just pass in the name of the function since this takes no parameters. So now that we've wrapped this initialize function in a lazy, we can take our lazy in the load method. So the initialize lazy and get the value. And that value is going to be our task that's going to do the initialization. And we can await that. And since this task is wrapped in the lazy, every time we await this value, we're only going to initialize once. So let's put a breakpoint in here and see that. So there we go. Once startup, we hit our initialization and let's go to make reservation and then go back. So there we go. We did not hit this initialize function again. But this is an issue currently because if we make a reservation, so submit that, we create the reservation and then our UI doesn't get updated because we didn't load the reservations again. But we don't want to load the reservations again because then we'd have to hit the database again. So what we need to do is directly tell our hotel store about the new reservation that we made so that we can add it to this in-memory list and then we really won't have to hit the database. So to do that, we'll have a method on our hotel store for make reservation. And this is going to build off our make reservation command. So this is where we currently execute the logic to make that reservation in the database. And that directly goes through our hotels make reservation method. But instead, we want to go through our hotel store. So we're going to cut this out and move this into the hotel store, which means this method will also need the reservation that we want to make. So we're going to make that reservation in the database, but we're also going to add that reservation to our list of in-memory reservations. So we just do an add, pass in the reservation. And now in the make reservation command, we can just use our hotel store in here. So let's update all of that to be the hotel store. Make sure we import it, update our field as well. And now in the make reservation execution, we can use our hotel store and make a reservation, passing in that reservation. And we'll go through the hotel store actually make it in the database, but then also add it to our in-memory list. So all of our state is in sync and we won't have any stale data, but we did change this constructor. So let's update that in the make reservation view model. This needs our hotel store now. And then we just pass that in in the app.xaml.cs. So now we should only hit the database once because we're doing that lazy initialization. There we go. We initialize. But then if I make a new reservation, there we go. The UI does update. So our data isn't stale even though we didn't hit the database. So managing state, lazy initialization, keeping data in sync and avoiding stale data, that's one benefit of stores, but the other benefit is reactivity. So just to demonstrate this real quick, what I'm gonna do is put a make reservation view model on my reservation listing view model. So we'll just get that through the constructor, assign that field and also update our little helper function down here. So pass that in here as well. And then lastly, update the app.xaml.cs to pass in the make reservation view model. And the reason I added that view model is because I want to update my UI. So we'll take the reservation listing view and we'll just add another row here. And underneath our list view, we'll have a make reservation view and set the data context to our make reservation view model, which is now on our reservation listing view model. And this is going to have to go in grid row two. We'll put some top margin on as well. Hopefully this looks good. Oh, it looks like we need a scroll viewer. Let me go to the main window and add that real quick. So we need to surround our main grid with a scroll viewer. And then I think the last thing I'm going to have to do to demonstrate this is remove our navigation whenever we create a new reservation. So let's just comment that out for now. And now I have this little section down here. So this turned out better than expected. Doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to create a new reservation. So submit that. And as you can see in our reservation listing view, the UI does not update. So we need some reactivity in here so that our reservation listing view can react to that new reservation that we created. And that is all going to be done via the hotel store. So we can't talk about reactivity without talking about events. So that is exactly what we're going to use to tell our reservation listing view model about the new reservation. We're going to have an event and this can just be an action that takes in a reservation, which is going to be the reservation that got created. And we'll name this event reservation created, or maybe we should call it reservation made since we make reservations. But anyways, after we make a reservation in this method, we want to invoke this event. So what I'm going to do is actually put this into a method. We'll call it on reservation made, generate that method. 
And inside here, we'll take our reservation made event and invoke it with the new reservation. So we're gonna have to pass that as a parameter to this function. So generate that parameter. And now in our reservation listing view model, we can take our hotel store that we pass in and subscribe to the reservation made event. So we'll call this on reservation made. And then we just have to add the reservation to our observable collection of reservation view models. So first let's create a reservation view model. And to do that, we just wrap our reservation in the reservation view model. And then we'll just add it to our observable collection of reservations and the UI should update. So let's see this. So let's submit that reservation. And there we go. We see our new reservation has appeared. Let's put some breakpoints in here just to demonstrate this a little bit closer. So we submit and we hit our make reservation method in our hotel store. So we make the reservation in the database. We add it to our in memory list of reservations on our hotel store. And then we invoke our reservation made event. And then here we are in our reservation listing view model since we subscribe to that event. And we're gonna add the new reservation to our reservations that we display on the UI. And there we go, there's another reservation. So store is definitely powerful, not only for lazy initialization, but also for reactivity and keeping our UI updated. But the last thing I wanna demonstrate is we did subscribe to this event. And whenever we subscribe to something, we have to be careful about memory leaks. So if I put a destructor on our reservation listing view model and remove this subscription and put a breakpoint here and the destructor, then all is good. We eventually hit this destructor. So the view model is getting cleaned up. But if I uncomment this event subscription, then here we go, clicking all day. We should be cleaning up our reservation listing view model since we leave it, but we just never do. And that is because our hotel store lasts the entire lifetime of the application so obviously that's never gonna get cleaned up. And then this hotel store also references our reservation listing view model since we subscribe to the event on the hotel store. So that means our hotel store is never letting this view model clean up and we have a memory leak. So that's not good. So what we need to do is actually dispose of this view model. So what I'm gonna do is on my view model base, we are gonna have a public dispose method and we'll make this virtual so that we can override it but here in the view model base we don't really have anything to dispose so let's go into our reservation listing view model and override dispose and inside here we're just going to simply unsubscribe from our event and we're actually going to need our hotel store into a field so that we can reference it later there we go all good but we never call dispose anywhere so where are we going to dispose of this view model well, the best place to do that is in our navigation store whenever we leave a view model in order to display a new view. So what we can do is take the previous view model and if it is not null, then we will simply dispose it. So let's put a breakpoint in dispose. I need my destructor back just so that we can make sure this worked. Oh, and I forgot to set this field for the hotel store. That's a dumb mistake. So we have to initialize the hotel store field with the hotel store that we pass in. So now let's go to our other view and there we go, we hit dispose, that's good. And then after just a little bit, we did hit our destructor. So the view model does get cleaned up and we are successfully disposing it, no more memory leaks. So the last thing I wanna mention is that you might have many different events on your store. You might wanna raise an event whenever the data gets loaded, or you might just have events for other CRUD operations such as updates and deletes. It's just whatever it takes to make your UI reactive and avoid displaying stale data. But anyway, stores, great for lazy initialization, managing application data in a centralized location, and supporting reactivity to avoid stale data on the UI. So this is definitely something that I apply to almost all of my applications, so hopefully you find it useful for your own application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you. Oh, one last thing, I'm gonna remove the make reservation view model from the reservation listing view model because it's kind of ugly. So get rid of that everywhere in here. Update my dang app.xaml.cs and get this junk off of my view and get this navigation back in my make reservation command. There we go, it's beautiful. All right, stay tuned for more.